never run like that before. Ever. Hooray! I don't know how, unless you wrote it, I don't know what the standard would be, you know? Take it for a ride. I'm good, you gotta just keep doing it. Bring it back inside your garage. How to synchronize your throttle bodies. It's not complicated, it's not rocket science, and there's a multitude of different tools you can use to achieve this. But let's, I'll point out some simple things. If we remember, what's going on here when you twist the throttle it pulls a cable that goes inside the junction box that end of that cable is attached to a pulley that round pulley when you twist the throttle pulls the other two cables that exit the junction box and go to each throttle body all synchronization means is that you want to make sure when you twist the throttle, both of these open at the same time or as close together as possible throughout your, your, your idle and through your 3500, 4000 4, RPM range. Why that range? That's the range these oil heads surge the worst at, 3500 to 4000 RPM. So if I try to tune them at that RPM, in the worst area, because if you get that right, the rest of the band is perfect. So it goes to the junction box, open those. Your choke cable, which is not a real choke, all this choke lever does is pull the left, it goes in the junction box again and it moves the wheel, but it only pulls the left side up just a hair. That's how that all works. So now we're down to throttle bodies and adjusting them. Never ran like that before. Oh, oh yeah. Now, since I learned it, it was just different coils. Yeah, the coil, like Chris was saying. Oh, why can't get close enough for that? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe he didn't yeah. tell me about a coil. I don't know. Seemed to me like it was running. I don't think it's run this good though. For a while. You want your engine hot up to operating temperature. And if you have a rider information display, that means five bars are visible in the oil temperature gauge, the left portion of your RID. These things are expensive too, so don't beat on them too hard. Right here. It's okay. Um, very rare do you see these much above eight bars and and that's pretty damn hot that's getting up into the range that the authority models the RTPs with the extra cooling fan or the cooling fan behind the oil cooler would kick on you don't have to worry about that on the civilian ones so that's that. We are up to temp. We'll set this back over here. We got our Twin Max back. Dave, you want to hook up the other side? Pull the hoses off. Put the Twin Max hoses on. You know, I got to I got to admit go that was great to... advice, twisting them for us, because I had a bitch getting them off. Good. 
Yeah. All right. Device. Yeah, we're set to that no, minimum, can... and now we're gonna go back to the maximum. And you see, we got a little. Slack. We need a little adjustment here. You need some more slack. Sorry, yeah. I'm over here, thinking around making adjustments here. All right, we're on. All right, we're on. We're zeroed. Can I prop this in a way that we can still see it all? Now we're into the final tuning. Thanks. Here, here. 10 millimeter wrench and your screwdriver of choice. This is what I use, but we're not going to have to mess with those because I already set the idle circuit. So I'm not expecting any further adjustment of those. So I'm going to set this one down because if it's in my pocket, I'm going to end up poking myself with it. I'm going to keep it where I can grab it quick. So your wrench, 10 millimeter wrench. We are at five bars on the oil temperature gauge. The mic, the, the twin max is zeroed. Our sensitivity is at maximum. We start the engine. This is this side. So what happens when we lift the cable up? It goes back over. Might need a little tweak of the idle circuit after all. A little bit out. That's good. Didn't move it much at all. It's done. <clears throat> hey, I'm gonna do this with my favorite tool for this job. You can get this at Beamer Boneyard. So we're gonna check the check this versus uh, the Twin Max that we just used to set this up. Get yours on, and I'll do mine. Oh yeah, I'm good. Park this somewhere. See, see something. Got a little bit of a bend in it. There. Yeah, let's go this way around that seat and dingly dangle it right there. There you go. That's freaking perfect. Up oh, periscope. Yes. See what that does. Mission on, contact.
and our idle is nice. We want these idle in a little over 1100. shut down in a moment because this thing is all done. That's that. This is not mercury. If you do this with mercury sticks, don't just rev it a little bit like I did or when you chop the throttle, all the mercury's got to go gone. Pretty bizarre and expensive and not good for you. So don't do that. <laughs> do, do I use this one? This one's for fuel injected bikes. Use something that's for fuel injected bikes. Or as Dave mentioned while we were filming, the, uh, the, the, the long tube with the transmission fluid in it. Those work okay too, I'm told. Yeah. I've never had that opportunity. Yeah, someone that looked pretty cool. I hope you use, they use this cab. Use a great big yardstick, you know, as a, as a sight gauge. And so that's it for now. There's uh, there's an ease, uh, a quickie, touching lightly upon throttle body synchronization. Um, once I get somewhere and I can set things up where I can make a better video of this, there will be a better video of this where I'll really go into detail and we can throw in all the different variables of different fuck ups and, and worn out throttle bodies into it and make a really boring ass long library worth of shit. Coming soon to a dumpster near you. That's it for now. Still here in Maine, looking for a place soon. Bye.